in the Meet Echo version, uh, more of my messy office is visible <laughs> than uh, if I'm on Zoom or WebEx. Yeah. Oh, well. Anyway. <clears throat> Uh, can you guys hear me? I, I was having an audio difficulty for a minute. Yeah, yeah, we can hear. I can hear you both times, but I don't think you could hear me. So. Oh, uh, good. Let me see. Oh, you can't hear Jay. <laughs> <laughs> they have to do the song and dance every time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yep. How are you settling in? Uh, I'm leaving tomorrow. We're, I'm just at the in-laws oh. and then flights. Oh, oh, oh. So, yep. And then um, we have a, a few days before our furniture arrives. So we're staying with some friends or camping on the floor. Not quite sure which yet. <laughs> See how it goes. It is at the top of the hour. I don't see Michelle yet, so let's wait another minute or so. I also didn't see a notes page yet, so I'm uh, not sure if no, I'm missing uh, that. No, it's created by the Meteco link itself, right? So I did populate it. Oh, that's why. OK. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't. Uh, it's only. Okay. Uh, it's in the in that automatic calendar announcement, isn't it, too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Or not. I don't see it now that I'm looking. So those long URLs. Wow, I completely forgot how to chat. Hey, hey, Warren. Hey, how are you? Yeah, doing well. We're just waiting for a few more folks to join. You're all looking very intently at your screens at the moment. <laughs> yeah, we're not reading our email or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll just take um. I'll take notes or add notes. Can you hand notes over to our AI overlords, uh, uh, Greg? Uh, not, I haven't done that yet, no. We still don't have Michelle yet, so that's yeah. um, I'll ping her on Slack. I have my phone. Okay, she's just coming off another call, so she's on her way. Perfect. Alice Russo has appeared. some of the dots I get 
little tips. For example, on Drews. But I don't see. You have the when I roll over Warren's yellow dot, I don't get a tooltip. Does anybody else in the participant list? Just curious if anybody else is noticing that same behavior. What do you say in the participant list? In the participant list in Medico, uh, yeah, some people I have a yellow dot. Karen has a yeah. blue dot. Groove has a yeah, blue and blue dots are blank. If I roll over them, yellow dots are blank as well. Me. And red says oh. IAP, and yeah, yellow so says me. Chair and ISG for the yellow dots. Oh, yeah, now it says chair. Yeah. Oh, no. It depends. Yeah. Sometimes oh, it does, sometimes it doesn't. It, it depends which angle I'll come at it from. What browser are you using? For me, it works oh, oh. for IAP and for all angles. Safari. Shall we start? Yep. Yeah, I think let's get back to the business. Uh, so welcome everyone. Welcome for today's interim for EODR. Thanks for being here. You have seen the agenda. Uh, is there any agenda bash? Does, does anyone has any new topic they want to propose that we talk today? Seeing nothing. Uh, I think introductions, perhaps we can skip unless somebody feels strongly they want to Talk about themselves. We'd love that. No? <laughs> so let's move ahead to the first item. Michelle, uh, off to you. Let me load your slides. Slides. Why is this not coming? Let me try again. Share slides. Confirm your selection. Yes, done. Michelle, I'm passing you the control. Oh, this is a bad. Okay. Can everybody hear me? Yep. Okay, so um, I'm presenting um, just a, a similar presentation to what was presented to the IESG. Um, a couple weeks ago. Um, and so it just covers kind of where we're at with the new participant program, um, where we were at, kind of what we've done, and then um, what we're hoping to do in the future. Um, so I, how come my slides are not advancing? Okay, now I have control. Thanks, Drew. Um, okay, so just looking back at like uh, around IETF 114 is where I started um, helping out with the new participant program. Um, we had kind of a limited set of emails that were going to the new participant mailing list um, prior to the meeting and during the meeting. Um, we had some what we called Q&A coffee break sessions prior to the IETF meeting to allow new participants to ask questions. We had the usual new participant overview and quick connections on the Sunday of the IETF meeting. Um, the secretary introduced the new participant dinner, um, it, which has been going on for, for quite a while now. And then um, we did have a new participant feedback session, which was in the form of a breakfast, but it wasn't quite you know, well attended as we had hoped. Um, then looking kind of forward and over the last two years, um, some of the things that we've changed, uh, some wording to make it a little bit more um, uh, acceptable to like distinguished engineers who are new to the ITF, but they're not really newcomers. So we changed um, most of the wording to new participants. Um, we improved um, signing up new participants to the mailing list as they registered, um, and then uh, made a lot of improvements to the emails that the new participants actually got. We have a schedule um, for the, the messages that they receive. Um, usually it's two per week leading up to the meeting, and then I do a daily message to remind them of what's happening at the meeting, just to help keep them organized. Um, 
we review the slides for the new participant overview every meeting um, to make sure that we address any feedback um, and any changes. Um, so uh, we, we do that. And then we also changed the Q&A coffee breaks to meet ECHO test sessions to allow new participants to be able to um, see how Meet Echo works, uh, allows them to test their video and audio, learn about the buttons, and um, they get to do that prior to actually arriving at the meeting. So that's um, also been helpful. And those have been um, attended, uh, I would say, much better than just the Q&A coffee breaks that we used to have. So that's an improvement. And then we also added the on-site introduction to Meet Echo. We've had those at the last two ITF meetings. Um, other things, um, we have strongly encouraged and added invitations and reminders for leadership to join uh, Quick Connections and the social hour that we have. Um, and um, I, new participants just love that. They love the opportunity to be able to actually meet with leadership. They often say that at other organizations, other meetings that they go to, they just don't have that opportunity. So. I think that was pretty important. Um, we have a meetup spot for new participants. We've been working um, with the guides uh, program to um, do some better things there. For example, we added a link to um, information about the guides program upon registration to try to get those early signups. Um, and then just lots of different feedback channels um, we did some one-on-one -on -one interviews with new participants um, around the London meeting, constantly just having conversation with new participants and also doing some surveys. So we're, we're still getting a lot of feedback, uh, which helps us kind of tailor what changes we want to make. So then um, we propose um, kind of a major change to the new participant program to start it at IETF 122 in Bangkok. Um, just from feedback and surveys, um, there's some key gaps in the information that they don't really get enough of. Um, they're only getting basically one slide in the new participant overview right now. And topics include like the standards process, how to bring work to the ITF, new work to the ITF, like what is the structure of the ITF, how to write an ID, and, there, and there's a couple others. Um, so, you know, we we are getting much better at welcoming and integrating new participants into the community upon, you know, this um, coming to the meeting for the first time. And we will continue to do that. But there, there are these gaps in actual information that we want to try to address. Um, and then the idea is that we want to have more of a full onboarding experience for them, a, like a program, you know, they check in in the morning, they have a full day of sessions. Um, and then um, we still continue with having the overview and the quick connections, but we would be adding um, some sessions in there that will hopefully make things clearer on how the IETF works. So if we look here, um, and don't don't be too concerned with the details here because we'll we're going to end up having to change and adjust and figure out for sure which topics and timing but you know this is just an idea of you know they check in and you know they get their badge and they are they get something that alludes to the fact that they're in this new participant program and then they have a bunch of sessions you know they have a lunch break together um, they have some more sessions and um, so that's kind of what we still really need to work on. The items in green here already exist, so we're just building on that. So we propose this to the ISG, uh, one of their informal uh, telechats, and basically requested that um, they approve this idea of expanding the new participant uh, program, and they did approve it. Um, on their formal September 19th telechat. And so, uh, you know, kind of next steps is working with the ISG and EODAR to um, get speakers for some of these sessions that we want to add. Um, 
it, very important is trying to find ways where we can have more interactive approaches to these topics because what we don't want is a huge group of new participants and we're just talking to them for eight hours like that's not helpful and they're we're going to lose their attention span so uh trying to get a little creative on how we approach um uh, talking about all these um, uh, different uh, topics. Um, and then also uh, we're going to have to look at like, you know, how many people are we going to have in this program? We've got to look at scheduling, we've got to look at space. All of those things are kind of what we're going to start looking at for Bangkok. Um, and um, that, I think that was my last slide. Yeah, that's my last slide. Um, so that's kind of where we're at now. And um, I will pause to see if there's any questions or comments or if anybody else has anything to add. Um, stop here. Uh, Andrew, go ahead. Yeah, I just, uh, uh, I'm muting. Uh, I mean, for what it's worth, that, that looks really good to me. I'm quite impressed, uh, Michelle. Uh, so uh, good, good to see you got approval for that. Um, but uh, if I was um, a new participant booking, so registering for the first time, let's say for Bangkok, would I be advised therefore to arrive on the Saturday? So, so would it be signposted to me in other words? Because obviously if I'm making my own travel arrangements, et cetera, I probably need to be told even at that point, you need to, land Saturday evening latest uh, so you're there Sunday morning 10 o'clock or whenever to sort of take part in the program which is all good but uh, yeah, just as long as they're aware prior to uh, booking flights etc. Yep that's definitely part of that last point on figuring out the details of um, you know how we're going to communicate this and how many like are we going to have a certain amount of spots available that that's all part of that but yeah people will need to arrive saturday so that they can start sunday morning um in most cases though um at least you know from what i've seen a lot of people do arrive saturday so that they check in sunday and you know in the case of new participants they're going to the sessions um the overview and they're there for quick connections so i'm hoping that won't be too much of an adjustment but we will have to have some communications um that explain that it starts you know early in the morning so um or not too early but morning time so we will definitely consider that for sure okay and also this may not be needed, but uh, I know when I'll be arriving in Bangkok because I have already booked my plane ticket. So if uh, if you need any help and I can help, then then just ask. But happy to help. Thank you for that offer. One thing, Andrew, you said um, people come for the first time. We um, uh, count new participants as people who have been to, I think, less than five meetings. Um, I can certainly see some people not doing this all in one go but doing some key parts of it at their first meeting and then some of the more advanced bits of their second or third meeting in that way and using it as a you know a dip in dip out program for the for based on their need yeah makes sense and i guess if my first time was in belf uh, was in dublin sorry and this wasn't available then i might be quite keen to do it in bangkok even if it wasn't my first time anyway so yeah that makes good sense Yeah, uh, thanks, Michelle. Thanks for doing this. This is very, very useful. We're really glad that you have been helping out with this. Uh, one thing with respect to speakers that might be a good idea to tap would be uh, the leadership who are stepping down and might have a little bit uh, Sunday getting a little bit freer. So, oh, but then I do realize that this is a March meeting and March meeting, it doesn't work. But maybe meetings after that, we could always tap uh like you know the leadership that is stepping down as a possible candidates for speaking on sunday uh, oh we love we we love to uh get iib and isg stepping down to keep them involved <laughs> it, it should be a requirement yeah. of stepping up is that you do this at the march meeting it yeah. really should 
<laughs> we can ask Cindy's on the call. We can ask her to add one item. So, okay, so we are signing you up for this now <laughs> as our uh, goodbye gift. Uh, one thing also that came to my mind was when you were asking about interactive things. So one thing which I've seen in some cases, which was kind of useful was before the newcomer sessions were starting, they were asked to write down what kind of questions that they had very early on, on at the start of the day itself and sort of submit them. Uh, like in, in the, in one case where I attended, it was on paper, but that doesn't have to be in paper. We can figure out various ways for people to submit that kind of questions. And then at the end of the sessions, they were able to find the right set of people and just collect from the leadership or even in the, in one of our mixers that we have at the end, using that time for people to, oh, pick one question up and let's try to answer that question for you, which was sort of an interactive way to do Q&A by just mixing up the questions. And then somebody comes up, picks the question and answer it, which I thought was kind of uh, done. And we can find some nice ways to use that as well. Uh, I wanted to see if you have any thoughts on that. And then I had one final comment. I mean, at this point, all we take in all ideas to try to make this interactive. Um, I, I made a note of that because um, that's one thing. If they have questions in the beginning of the day, like this is what they'd really like to know. We want to try to make sure we answer their questions by the end of the day. So um, I made a note of that. It's a great uh, suggestion. Um, so I'll definitely keep that in the pool of ideas. Thanks, Drew. And one final question that I had was with respect to non-repeat survey, was there any in the survey that we did for folks that were not coming back, uh, who only attended one ITF? Is there anything actionable from that that we have right now that you could share with us? Um, so the first survey we did was a little constricted because we were just focusing on people who um, had not come to like the next meeting, but we're modifying the survey a little bit to try to um, include those who come on a cyclical basis. So let's say an attendee only goes to the European meetings, then we would expect, you know, they would be out one of three. So we're making some adjustments to the survey that we're going to be sending out. And I don't know if there's any data that or trends or anything that we can pull as of yet uh i'll let jay jay do you have any feedback there i need to say that we didn't get very good data this time so we're going to redo it um and uh, as michelle says we're going to go back to people who came to ietf 117 san francisco but didn't come to a meeting after that and um try to get better data then because it, it does appear as if there are quite a lot of people who simply come cyclically and therefore ask, we ask them too soon, really. Understood, thanks. Karen? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I forgot one of the things I was gonna say. The second thing was um, with respect to asking leadership to do speaking spots, I think you also need to think about the working group chairs, especially some of the working group chairs for some of the key uh, bigger working groups. Um, I think they're just as capable of doing some of these talks as the leadership um, and I think the, uh, as the IEB, IESG, I consider them part of the leadership as well, uh, especially if there's working groups that are um, the hot topics or whatever. Um, I think that's helpful. Uh, also, oh, you stopped sharing. Um, I will, the, uh, could you go back to the slide with the schedule? Just, um, I have a woodpecker on my house and I was completely distracted and looked away and then the schedule was gone. <laughs> Um, the, the proposed schedule, not, not that one, the, that, that one. Yeah. Um, I had a question, but I've forgotten what it was. So well, and keep in, keep, keep in mind that this just was, <laughs> yeah, that was just an idea to try to kind of visualize what it could look like, but um, you know, there's some very short little periods of time in there that we need to re kind of rethink. And you also need time for um, if we end up doing some type of interactive thing, you know, I was even thinking about potentially smaller groups that 
kind of move them around. Like we have to think of all the movement times in between. So that that was just to give you a yeah. basic idea. So something to get their blood moving and stuff. But, Ex um, exactly. I do, I do think Jay's Jay's point about uh, people or or somebody. I think I don't know if it was Jay. Somebody said about dropping in and and, and stepping out. I, I could see somebody doing this over multiple meetings, not necessarily going to the full day the first time, but you know, going to a couple and then going to a couple more and then, um, and also like with respect to, um, I know this is specifically targeted at newcomers, but I think if you have it on the agenda, something like bringing new work to the ITF might end up with a few regular participants who are like, hmm, I wonder what the current story on that is. Um, so anyway, but yeah. And from an EO dirt perspective, um, if we don't have, uh, like recorded tutorials or anything, you know, fairly recent on some of these topics as refreshers for, um, ITF, um, attendees who have been participants who have been participating say for, you know, five or six years, uh, you know, it's something maybe to think about that maybe we need some of those for just general ITF participants to understand how to do things. Well, so. the bringing new work to the IETF one is the one that's been in the back of my head for a while because the, the current one we have is, is pretty dated um, and it would be really nice to have an update on that. Now I know some of that's being addressed by you know, wiki and websites and stuff like that, but um, if there's something that's already being done that could be leveraged for the more general population, it might be useful. So anyway, interesting. Are there any more questions on this topic? No, so let's let me stop sharing and let's go back to our agenda. Uh, so now we are at the part of the meeting where we give a quick update of any of the activities from each of the group, anything that we need help, uh, just a notification whatever you want to say. And outreach is the first one. So let me start uh, uh, by giving an update. Uh, today, I took part in an internet governance NSIG event, which is an internet governance school, uh, which is pretty, run pretty good. So far, I've always done this uh, online, but this time they were in my city uh, in Bangalore. So it was nice to go and do this in person which was pretty good. Uh, it's, they collect uh, various different students, not just students, people who are early careers. Uh, they were people with uh, around 11, 12 years of experience as well, who take part in three years trying to learn more about the internet governance policy space. Uh, there were folks from ISOC, folks from ICANN. Uh, uh, I was uh, talking about ITF, IAB, and Similarly, it was a pretty good discussion. I gave a presentation on ITF and process. So I, I think ITF process anyway is sort of unique. So when you are hearing a lot about uh, ICANN and IGF and this and ITU and thinking about the ITF way of thinking, many people said that, yes, it, it stands out. And that was kind of really nice to hear. And good thing was when I asked folks, uh, how many of you know about RFCs? How, how many know about ITF? Many people raised their hand. Uh, so there is a good understanding of uh, where it is, not so much about, oh, do you want to participate in ITF per se? And good thing was like talking about a lot of internet governance, hot topics that ITF is dealing with. And when I gave those examples, people collect re immediately understood that, yes, there is a lot of work related to internet governance space that happens in our ITF and IRTF circle as well. The recent set of boffs, like especially uh, the digital emblem one, there was a lot of interest, a lot of people asked questions and I kind of give them an idea of how to participate remotely and all the other things. So this was a pretty good in-person opportunity. I did meet, uh, there was a recent ICANN board member who's from India. So it was a good to meet him in person as well, make those connections. And hopefully we'll have, uh, some better interactions coming out of that. So that was pretty good. Uh, and I've shared the slides and other things in our usual wiki as well. If people have any feedback related to that, feel free to share as well. So uh, that's something that I took part in. And now, in fact, we have various different outreach activities uh, related to an IB workshop that we have planned in December. 
which is on network management. And a bunch of people from the program committee are visiting various operator events. We have uh, RIPE, where Warren, uh, Chen, uh, uh, and uh, Kent are going to Nanog. And similarly for RIPE, we have Benoit. Uh, for Lacknock, we have Benoit. And Mahesh is going for Autocon. So our aim at these is mainly talking about the IB workshop, but of course, uh, I, ITF outreach and passing things about what ITF does is a side happy side effect of uh, these kind of discussions as well. So hopefully we will have some learnings from these kind of activities that we can learn and improve on in the future as well. Uh, the, another main event that is happening uh, in October is the ITU one, which is in New Delhi. Roman is participating uh, in the GSS. And this is, uh, a, as we know, is like a pretty good uh, event. This was, in fact, one of the potential places for holding ITF meeting as well. If we ever do it in India, it's in New Delhi. It's a pretty good symposium. So something to look and check with Roman on his experience on that could be uh, nice as well. So that's my three points that I have on outreach. Any questions, any comments that people want to share? Hi, Karen. Go ahead. <laughs> Hi. Actually, not a question, really, just a, a, a request or a favor. Um, and I think Michelle knows what I'm getting ready to say because <laughs> we talked about it yesterday. Um, if you could just send, like, super short, uh, this is being done to the EODER mailing list to keep the, the mailing list. I, I know that it's going up on a wiki, and I know that reports are showing up in other places. I, I'm not looking for detailed you know, trip reports or anything like that, but just a reminder that way, if you saw the recent thread that had uh, John Clanson and I, I know Jay responded, uh, I just, I think people don't understand what's going on and, and, you know, each, different people have different views of where they get their information. And so if you could just occasionally hmm. post updates. Yeah, that so um, my thinking was to include this in this interim meeting report. Yes. That that yeah. could be one way of just to consolidate and send it. But otherwise, like you know, if there is an important event that we want to share, yes, I completely agree. Yeah, That's it's just a important. you know, like um, like I when when we we were talking the new participant stuff yesterday, we were talking about doing a you know after the meeting, not a full report or anything, but a. You know, we had a new participant program, like three or four sentences, kind of the same kind of thing that mm. sometimes shows up in the interim in the meeting, but just as a uh, as a reminder to people to discuss things on the mailing list. Uh, so Transparency, so people can't complain. I would say doing it in report from this meeting is um, a good way to do it, as Drew suggests, because then they get everything all at once and they know then what that this is the um, coordination function they don't have to look in different places for things well it's not so much that they have to it's it's that we don't right now we have six of these a year right now we're doing an interim and we're doing the main meeting so that's six things a year but Duros is always saying well you know there's a whole wiki full of things that are happening so it would be really nice it was just a couple sentences it says this happened if you're interested here's a report um and i think what happens with minutes when they come out is people you know if, if you're interested in all of it, then you go and look at it. But I just, um, I think it would be helpful to have a little bit more regular traffic on the mailing list. Um, so. Yeah, I think we can have a sort of a middle, uh, this thing, we definitely put this as a part of our minutes, but I think I can frame this more, not as a report, but maybe a conversation starter or just experience sharing on one of those events. So I'll think about it and if I can frame it in, that sort of a way that might be a good way to uh do both like send a report plus right. this as a conversation starter it's also just sort of a, a reminder you know if you're mm -hmm. doing this kind of thing and you want to send your not not yeah. you personally but you send it out if somebody else is is going somewhere and reporting back cool. this is a reminder to I, them you know there, there can even be like a standardized you know here's a, a template the template of slides or information that you can use if you're going elsewhere um, and then, you know, others could report back as they're doing it. Um. Sure. Thanks. 
So next we have working group chairs forum. So Rich, Karen. Um, so there's a couple of proposed, uh, a couple of people who volunteered to speak so far. We haven't formed up an agenda, uh, primarily because uh, I always usually wait uh, to see if like Jay, if you have anything you want, there's specific topics that take priority. Um, and so, We'll we plan to have one like we always yeah. have. Go ahead. You have the, the, the ISG would like me to come back and talk about surveying of working groups again. Okay. So I'm preparing that again. All right. So you are planning because that was the one we talked about yep. last time. Okay. Yes. Sorry. I, I should have sent that to you by now. I'll make a note to do that. I, I'm, I'm just at the point where I'm thinking about the next meeting. So, <laughs> um, so other than that, there, um, Rich, I just draw, drew a blank on the other gentleman who wanted to present. Um, so, but anyway, uh, we Tim, have one or two. Tim, yeah, Are Tim Wysinski. Yeah. Um, and he was going to talk about tools they developed in DNSOP, um, which is a pretty busy working group. And yeah, does Warren, your name is mentioned more than once. Uh, my name is taken in vain. There's yeah. uh, some, he's got some other slides. Um, he's a pretty entertaining guy. He'd leave remote, but he's, uh, yeah. I mean, I think this is basically the GitHub issue tracker thing, which I'd created and pointed people at. So, I mean, happy for him to chat about it. I'm just not sure how much value there will be for most, most yeah, participants. Well, there's a, there are other, you no, know, he's expanded on it, not just yours. Yours is just one, you know, the, the thing you did was a, a non-zero yeah. fraction, but it's not the only thing. But, HTTP does stuff. And, so and part of it is the 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 meta topic of how do you manage the workload in your working group, and this is one perspective on how it could be done. Um, and then so the conversation is not so much this is a tool and this is how it works, but it's like how do you manage the workload in the working group, and that's the kind of thing that the working group chairs tend to discuss uh, in the face to face meetings. So um, that's where we are with that. Uh, thanks, Karen. Uh, next, we have an update from Sisters. Uh, we got the uh, email uh, from them. Uh, I've put that in the minutes as well. But Karen, do you want to share uh, quickly what, what's been happening? Uh, yeah, so at the, the last uh, Sisters forum, the last time we met in person, uh, the Sisters were talking about two things in particular. One was to uh, talk to the NOMCOM about um, the non-com process and how the sisters can, can can help better support that and then the second one was uh, a conversation with leadership so uh, as you will see in carlina's uh, report she and i attended the uh, non-com meeting um, a week or two ago uh, and there's a set of slides that she did for that um, and the main point was really to have a conversation about I don't think anybody necessarily needs to be convinced that you know diversity is important and how it influences the organization, but it's more like what can uh, the non-com do to, to to be prepared to provide to be prepared prepared to evaluate the candidates uh, with diversity in the back of their head, and then it's also like what can groups like the sisters and the leadership and the general IETF community do. Uh, so it's it's not just a Non-com, you need to check all of these boxes. It was more of a conversation about what different pieces of the community could do to help um, address growing new leadership and growing more diversity in leadership. So that was the first topic. And then the second topic uh, is the um, the open house. And so those who were in the um, who were in Vancouver also uh, had the. We talked about doing an open house. This is. And to take a step back, the, Carlina did all the work in preparation. I was just there to support her for the non-com uh, as a second person in the room. Uh, for the open house, she is she and um, Flo had planned a um, open house that we're still working through the, the nature of what the exact set of questions are. Uh, and uh, Laura and my secretariat is helping to support the development of that. The um, Carlina and Flo will both not be in Dublin. And so uh, myself and Sophia have agreed to help 
be their, their on-site people uh, for that event. Um, it's targeting Thursday lunch, I believe. Um, and so that's coming through. And then there's also currently a poll out um, for the sisters to meet with leadership uh, to discuss uh, the output of the diversity, the uh, America's report. So um, Carlina has been quite busy and I can answer any questions if people have any specific questions related to that. Um, uh, Karen, uh, related to meeting with the leadership, I had one question in the, uh, it was not very clear if, if whether it includes working group chairs and RG chairs, or is it only the NOMCOM appointed leadership? Uh, when you say that me, you're not talking about the, the doodle poll for a meeting with like- no, I'm talking about the, I'm talking about the doodle poll. Like in the doodle poll, it says meet with the leadership versus meet with everyone. So in my mind, that was the question I left as a comment there that I'm not sure oh. what you are asking, whether it is oh, okay. uh, just the nomcom or because one thing would be, I think we should definitely include working group chairs and RG chairs in that conversation. I, I think this, this, the this specific, like the, the one that she's trying to schedule, but you know, between now and the next IETF is specifically with the IESG. Uh, so it, it's okay. specifically like how the IESG is dealing with Medica's report. The open house that's being planned at Dublin, that's still a question. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm talking about the open house. Oh, the open house. I think it's it's, it's a question about whether it's going to be. Um, it's definitely not just the uh, the nomcom appointed leadership. Mm. It's working group chairs. The question is whether there might also be some opportunity to include some community members, um, but it's still not uh, formulated. So that I, I don't I don't think the answer. That's a question I've asked, and I don't think mm. that the final answer is known yet. It needs to be a limited number of people. Um, and she wants in general it to be for the whole community, you know, anybody, not, not obviously everybody at once, but it, it should be open to the whole community. But we were thinking the first run through this might be uh, working group chairs and, you know, a, a set of a set of um, people that would confirm, it, it wouldn't just be, a, you know, we, we're looking at a facilitated discussion and so it would it can't be 200 people it needs to be um, and i don't the, the final what that number needs to be yet hasn't been defined but um, that's a very long-winded answer to the two different meetings two different audiences <laughs> any questions any for sisters Go ahead. nope so let's move to tutorials oh Tutorials. Um, so on tutorials, the uh, I have requested that the secretary allocate space to do uh, the the WIT area overview, um, and I have reached out to uh, Matt. Well, I just I'm, I'm I'm drawing I'm not drawing a blank on a name. I'm drawing a blank on the pronunciation. This is awful. Miria. Miria. I was thinking Medicaid because we were just talking about her report. <laughs> Um, anyway, I've reached out to her. I haven't heard back on a confirmation, but last I heard she had speakers lined up. And so I just need to get that confirmed before the agenda gets announced. And I don't, so that's in the product, but it's planned to happen. We'll see what happens. Thanks. The notion be on Sunday, right? Yeah. Sunday. Uh, yeah. So I asked her to do, or I asked Laura to, to, put into this, the secretariat scheduling uh, something that uh, to try and find a time slot that did not interfere with uh, newcomers stuff and the IAB if at all possible. But that, that means you got to figure out, I don't know whether the IAB is going to be in the morning or the afternoon this time. Um, be in the morning. It's going to be in the morning. That makes it easier because the afternoon is harder for this. So. <laughs> Thanks, Karen. Uh, and we have guides next. Uh, Paul, would you like to say a few <coughs> We got an update from Wes, uh, basically, which said that they are just gearing up for the upcoming meeting. Yeah, Paul. Hi. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure if there's that much to to um, to add to that. Like we're sort of you know redoing redoing our the same things we have done in the last few meetings. Um, 
Yeah, the first requests are coming in. Uh, Michelle, do you know? Just, there's nothing new, right? Yeah, no, um, we're, we're getting close to having some new guides documentation um, to be public. Not quite yet, but we're, we're getting there. Um, and then, yeah, we're just, um, I'm going to be going through the database requests and checking to see who's registered. And then that, then that feeds into Paul, Wes, and Reese trying to start uh, looking at potential matches. And if, if they can make matches early, great. But as we've experienced IETF after IETF, so many matches and the onslaught of requests comes in usually very close to the meeting. So we, we're just doing our best there. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Michelle. Uh, for the final one, we have LLC and comms update. Greg? Yeah, real quickly. Um, so first of all, I'd like to plug the next LLC comms uh, interim meeting. So we hold interim meetings uh, to provide more detail about what's going on there. Um, every month that there is not an ITF meeting. And so October counts as one of those. So there's one scheduled for 20 uh, A quick question. One, can whoever's typing mute? And can you speak up a little bit, Greg? I'm having a little trouble hearing you. Okay, uh, I will try. I'm, I'm speaking pretty loudly. Does this better? Oh, that's much better. And and the typing has stopped. Might have been the, type, might have been the typing. Um, okay, thanks. Thank um, so next meeting is scheduled for 29 October. Um, it's look for the announcements. It'll be on ITF Announce and also on Admin Discuss. Um, <clears throat> uh, so that's if you if you. Uh, are intrigued by the teaser that I'm about to provide, that's where you get to learn more. Um, second thing is, uh, I will say that there's been a lot of updates to the website since the last EODER interim meeting. Um, in particular, uh, we, uh, mostly Jay and myself, have worked a lot on the participate um, content. Uh, so if you look at the website under the participate section, a lot of that um, information is new uh, or revised. Um, I can't remember if the Tau was retired since we last had an interim. I think so. So uh, a lot of the content there really sort of picks up and updates information that might have been previously covered in the Tau. Um, the second uh, area of focus will be the technology section, um, which I know uh, Warren has also worked on. The goal there, there are two goals for that section now. The first is to really provide a much richer um, description of what technologies are, are being worked on in the ITF. So that will include sort of a rethink of what's pretty a sparse set of content there right now. Um, and the goal there is to provide um, a much better view of what the ITF is working on and how it relates to not just the everyday internet. So this is the um, uh, maybe the non-participant audience that we're looking for, but also how it relates to uh, companies or or the the, the industries that are um, depend on the internet to get their get their business done. Um, so uh, you'll see that the, the the other aspect of this is that the um, process by which people find where work is happening in the ITF that is very um, uh, that is of interest to them is. It's pretty tough now. We regularly get um, comments about how it's not easy to find where, for example, somebody is um, uh, likely to, to run into the technologies that they're interested in, um, unless they already kind of know how the ITF is structured. And I know Warren has worked on this with the working group keywords section. Um, uh, there's been some general guidance, say, from uh, past or, or previously developed information like the informal guide to the ITF. But we're looking to make that um, a much easier journey for someone who's new to the ITF, maybe super experienced in technologies like the kind of um, audience that Michelle talked about earlier, who would be, um, uh, you know, we made some changes to the new participant program to make it more appealing to them. Uh, yeah, so finding te technology, finding how to get in involved in technologies that are already underway in the ITF is part of the is part of the plan for that section. So uh, all of that implies a lot of work on content, which we've been uh, doing, and also, for example, um, 
in, in the form of blog posts, new content, etc. So, uh, yeah, that's that's my update. Come come to the LLC comms meeting for more. I see Warren's in the queue, so I'll just stop. Yeah, just a note from that. Um, a fair bit of the keyword stuff is supposed to be folded into the data tracker at some point. Um, so there's an open bug on that, and there's a presentation about it, and so hopefully at some point that will happen. Yep, for sure. And that's uh, something that we'll hope to anticipate in the work that we're doing. There isn't a timeline on that yet, is there, Warren? Yeah, yeah. Nope. Okay. But we'll keep that in mind for sure. Uh, Greg, a little, uh, little off topic, but uh, I, I wanted to see if other folks in the call have any thoughts on that. You remember we had one conversation re related to creating presentation material targeted to specific audience. Perhaps that could be something worth discussing. Yes. Uh, uh, thanks for bringing that up. Uh, as uh, folks may know, there's a general overview presentation about the ITF that gets uh, revised after every ITF meeting, so about basically three times a year. Um, there was a suggestion, and, and Dhruv and I have had a few conversations back and forth about it, about creating more um, focused modules for particular audiences. And so the idea is to start with a few of them, like, for example, the open source community, um, have a, two or three slides that people could draw from uh, if they were presenting to that uh, kind of audience. So yeah, so this, this general idea is uh, um, what we're working on to sort of enhance the set of materials that are available to people who want to talk about the ITF. but. Um, yeah, maybe don't know where to start. So, so uh, we kind of thought that the three uh, three target groups that we could start from are open source community, uh, network operators, and operations community, and policy makers as our three mm -hmm. targets set. Uh, and this could also be seen in, like, you know, if you look at our past presentations and outreach event, most of them do fall under these categories. So targeting them could be a good idea. Uh, and if folks have any ideas and thoughts or something that they liked specifically, that should be included. For instance, in the uh, in the policy makers one, one of the slides that Lars did about like you know, starting the presentation showing uh, a, a blueprint that see uh, ITF doesn't do really blueprints. What we do is Lego blocks and how via Lego blocks you connect. That actually connects very well with that kind of audience who understands that yes, because they are looking for a blueprint and uh, setting that expectations right at the very start really, really helps. So ideas like that could be really useful. Yeah. Sorry, just taking, I'm taking notes on, on this section as well. So yeah, thank, thank you, Drew. That's a very good point. And I did look at your slides uh, and I noticed that you used the Lego block mm -hmm. uh, slide from the INSIG. The agency given. So. And we have reached the AOB part of our agenda. Anybody has any last comments? Uh, yes, Andrew. All right. Yeah, just two two things. Um, I, I put in the chat, but I'll just try to highlight one thing. Um, I, uh, I will be at the IGF in uh, Riyadh. I, um, I, but think if I recall correctly, the the there won't be a sort of leadership presence there, given that there was at the last meeting in Kyoto. It, um, Roman is attending. Oh, he is. Okay, fine. Because um, uh, you know, even though I appreciate there may be some concerns about the host, <laughs> to put it mildly, nevertheless, I think it's a really important audience. Um, uh, notwithstanding the uh, location but okay for everybody that's fine uh second thing then just briefly uh and i know i'm probably in a minority of one on this but uh the isoc policy forum whatever it's called that was that happened alongside the meeting in vancouver um i had some good feedback from that except that when it finished there wasn't really any encouragement for participants to stay and continue to engage with the itf um it uh, and, and this is hearsay i wasn't there but the gist seemed to be finished the program i think i think they maybe finished a day or so before the itf meeting but 
there wasn't any sort of you may wish to say yeah if you stay for the next two days why don't you go into more of the IETF meeting so I do think that's a missed opportunity um, that it's I know it's run by ISOC not by the IETF but I think it's madness to not try to leverage that in some way um, I'd like to explore that not on this call because there won't be time. But uh, and as I said, I appreciate I'm probably still in the minority of one. But it, you know, the fact that people were there, they then left. They didn't come across to engage further in the ITF. Just seems like you know, surely there's something that could be done there that will be the the ISOC would be comfortable with if only we had the conversation and, and, and explored it. So uh, ideally, that would be a useful conversation, having a bit more detail, perhaps uh, in Dublin, assuming that there's a side meeting in Dublin. Yeah, there will be. Thanks, Andrew. Uh, Michelle? I was just going to say, Andrew, I work really closely with the ISOC policy program folks who um, organize that. And um, I can pass that information along. Um, I know there's some constraints to um, ISOC, like, paying for certain amount of nights of hotel rooms and things of that nature. But um, I, I'll pass along that that uh, information just so they're aware. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks, everyone, for staying with us, for taking part in interim. And I hope to see you all in Dublin. Thank you, Drew. Thanks. Thanks, Drew. Thanks. Take care.